this is Colin Digits with the Digits Club. I have about 25 people here today uh, and we're going to have a look at the crypto market. So we're going to see what's going on and what is interesting, what we're looking at. And we're doing this every single week in the Digits Club Discord. So if you are not there yet, feel free to join through the link in the description below. I'm going to start a screen share. You guys can put questions in the chat box. I'll keep the chat open. So if you have questions, um, is the chat actually open for everybody to write in? Yeah, I think everybody can write in it. I'll put the first message. Yes, all right, perfect. So if you have any questions, put it in the chat. In case uh, we want to have a little bit of a further discussion, we can just pick that up uh, along the way. So obviously quite surprising. I have the uh, Russia Ukraine live updates from Al Jazeera open because uh, we have a lot of employees for my companies in Ukraine. So it has definitely been some crazy developments over the last couple of days. Uh, and I keep up to date uh, through those updates throughout the day. However, if we look at this junction right here, obviously a little bit of a scare, uh, it basically proves overall that nobody can predict Bitcoin's pattern, right? No technical analysis would have called this huge drop and then this huge spike all of a sudden. Uh, whatever, one thing I do want to stress, what I've been trying to tell people over the last couple of weeks, my personal vision has changed quite a bit on the cryptocurrency market. Let me give you some examples. If we look at today, yes, we went basically from 35 uh, K okay. that was yesterday at about 4 p.m. Uh, all the way to the highest point here, which is 39 K. When we look at a percentage difference, that is a huge increase, right? Percentage wise, um, some extreme volatility. So the run up was definitely right here, right? In this period. Now, when we look at a seven day period, there is again, extreme volatility on the chart. When we look at a one month, we can still see volatility, but the discrepancies become less. Three months, and basically when you go all time, let's just remove the starting period and we go to the hills, the discrepancies are not that significant, right? Yes, we can see where the actual bull runs are, and we can see where the decline is, but the ever uh, lurking crypto winter, are we going to foresee uh, a long bear market? Uh, what does that actually mean? That might occur, right? Uh, as I always stress, I'm not too good with the charts and I'm not too good in predicting uh, the entire crypto space, but I do believe that this is so hot and so trending right now, there would be no significant reason for this to, when some people say like, oh, Bitcoin will go back to 10,000, uh, which I think is extremely unlikely that something like this would occur, right? We, when we see this cycle, we see this pattern, if you, Basically what I'm trying to say is if you look at things on a daily basis, it will drive you fucking mad, right? So if you try to play the charts on a daily basis, you better know technical analysis. You better know how human emotions reflect on the market. However, I don't see any reason why we would um, have to do that, right? Let's take cryo war. It's the perfect example. Last three months, right? So in the last three months, which basically as of December, so it's not even that old of a coin, right? It was actually launched in middle of November. So just right before the gaming bull run, it was launched on the perfect moment, basically. But let's look at the last three months, right? It basically came from $4.60. At any moment in time, if this went down, everybody would have said it's a good entry, right? There's never a better entry than so far away from the all time high. Right? I made the entry at about a dollar. I was extremely happy that I finally made that entry at a dollar, right? Because I was waiting, I missed it, I was waiting. But that again, that, that missing the actual commitment and the commitment was $1. It went to, let's say 95 cents and I didn't buy it. And two days later, it was at dollar 13 again. But that's only when you are too busy looking at the daily patterns and miss out on the bigger picture of things, right? So anybody looking at the daily patterns is most likely dealing with less than $10,000. Right. If you're dealing with a hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand, a million, two million, then you're automatically looking at the bigger scale of things. So this is at twenty six cents right now. Right. Would I buy more at the moment? No, because I already have 
$5,000 of value there, which is now basically, uh, or 10,000, I'm not sure what it was anymore, but it's one fourth because I ended at a dollar, right? Um, so yeah, can you always make a, another entry? Yes, but on a steadily declining market, this coin is steadily declining. What happens if the market goes up? This coin will most likely, as of all, all the other coins uh, go up as well. Right, so that trend. But it's very much important to not focus on what is happening today and yesterday, although those things are important in the moment, you do not want to solely focus on the short-term patterns because things are so extremely volatile right now. And I think in, in, in a bull market, everybody can make money, right? Everybody's a genius if everything goes up. Um, this is obviously, let's take Falcon, right? Because I've been looking at Falcon for quite a while. So yesterday, we, we, we picked up Falcon as well on, on the video. Uh, at that time, it was about $8, right? I said it would make an entry at $5. So you could have definitely made a 20% gain. Um, I'm going to pull up a chart from, oh, wait. I'm not sharing my entire screen. Hang on, let me share it again. I'm going to pull up a chart from uh, the Discord actually from yesterday, which I think was quite interesting. I'm not too sure where it was posted. I think here, there we go. Perfect. This was obviously very interesting. Crypto Winter, very smart dude. Uh, came back with the probability, right? Probability, I think when we go back, if something happens six times, a pattern is being created, right? By the invasion. So basically it was about the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. By the invasion, by the invasion, by the invasion. Uh, you would be very much seeing a reflection of that. Uh, what did we see in the extreme short term? We did see that already go up. But if you look at this, right, if you would have just followed the data, which is presented here, it goes against human emotion, yet you would have made almost a 20% return just on those two trades. If you would buy the lowest low and you would trade the highest high currently, which is also unlikely, but let's say you made a 10% gain, right? That is significant. However, you have to decide for yourself in which area you're playing. Are you playing those extremely volatile, lucky swing trades? Or would you make an entry right now and sell it when it's back in, in the bull run at about uh, 40, $45, <laughs> right? So that's like a 4X. But the great thing is two different approaches. One is extremely stressful and the other one is not at all. You basically buy into the token and you just wait. But of course, you would have to be patient, right? Because nobody knows when it's going to happen. It might happen real quick. It might take a long time. Is there a point to make an entry when you're down 80% um, in Cryo War, for example? I'm kind of considering 80% denied loss as a complete lost bet, basically. Um, so let, let's go back to cry war in that case. Yes. So there's two things one has to understand, I think, which are really important. Yes. Cry war. The, the problem with the cryptocurrency market at the moment is that cry war, the chart doesn't reflect cry war's performance. The chart reflects Bitcoin's performance, right? These coins are so related to the performance of Bitcoin that this project might do amazing, but the market sentiment is not there. The support is not there because everybody looks at Bitcoin. So this chart is going down. Does that mean Cryo War is a bad project? No. Does that mean any other project is a bad project? Also no, right? But I've been following Cryo War and I've been really impressed how they develop things, although it's, it's quite slow. Um, so I would definitely not say uh, the value is not lost. So in, in the crypto investment space, we always say, you don't lose unless you sell, right? What that means is you actualize the loss. So these terms are always abused by moon boys, right? You haven't lost the money unless you sold. Let's diamond hand this shit all the way until fucking hell, right? They buy something for $10, it goes to two cents, but I didn't lose no money because I didn't sell. Well, if it goes from $10 to two cents, probably it's going to go bust on liquidity, right? Um, it's probably gone. However, if something goes from a dollar to 26 cents and you actually do believe in the project in a bearish market, 
and the market turns more bullish and it goes up to a dollar, now you have recuperated that loss by doing nothing. So you didn't actualize, actualize the loss, right? It wasn't there, it was just temporarily. That's why on DeFi liquidity farms, you have impermanent loss. The loss is not permanent unless you take off the liquidity and then becomes permanent. So those terms are quite important to understand. Does it mean that we have now the same money that we had before? No, right? Uh, but I, I can give you one example, which is quite interesting, which is important to understand. So cryptocurrency is obviously linked at the US dollar value, right? As, as the, the amounts here are being displayed in US dollar value. So if you had one Ethereum before, and Ethereum value goes up 10%, right? The US dollar value is now higher, yet you still have one Ethereum. The Ethereum amount doesn't change. Only if you sold the Ethereum or bought Ethereum in the meantime, the US dollar amount is relevant to you. So one of the safest bets, in my opinion, uh, long-term strategies would be buy 10 Ethereum and don't look at it for 10 years. That would probably be one of the best suggestions, right? The more you play, the more you're likely to lose. Uh, yet, we all want to touch things, want to play things, want to look at things, and that's how most of the time things get, get messed up a little bit, right? But that is definitely a good insight. All right, any other questions? Let me just go to the launch pad real quick. There we go. This one is quite interesting. I didn't pull the trigger when I should have. I, I said it on the video yesterday that I would buy Superfarm, but I didn't do it. And now I regret it. See, going against my own advice. Uh, but that happens all the time. So that's okay. Um, I'm just being patient. I think the volatility in the market is still there. And uh, the launch pads are definitely not as recovered as we might think, right? Even if the market turns more bullish, it takes a while for these launch pads to recover because they need like a good launch one after another to really get that value back, right, over time. So the only thing that's holding steady is Communidas, basically because of their insane burn they're going to do, right, which really holds strong on the value. Nearpad is doing quite as good as well. But everything else, is might be up like 25%, but they're still down 21% over the last seven days. So it's not really weighing out those things. Do you still look at crypto in relation to fiat, or do you only think about crypto versus crypto value? Uh, that's an interesting question. How do you see crypto in the medium long term as compared to fiat? So basically, there are two different things, right? The thing is, we have to compare it to fiat, otherwise it has no value to us. Uh, so it, it basically depends how it's utilized. We will utilize these, these tokens as investors to, at the end of the day, turn it back to fiat, right? That is the ultimate goal. Uh, if I have 10 Bitcoin, I'm not going to hold 10 Bitcoin unless it has a direct utility in the real world to convert to gold or something else, which it doesn't have. Fiat is like our main currency, right? That's how our world is built uh, at the end of the day. So that's why I think the relation between the two is still very important, um, just for analytical purposes, right? To understand how these things work together. When we look at uh, the medium long term, I think one of the most important things is right now what everybody has to understand why these charts are so volatile is extremely high risk, extremely high reward, right? We see 9% increase. Uh, this, this, this chart is bumpy like crazy. If this would be the stock market, nobody would invest, right? Um, however, more regulations will come in over the next few years and the risk becomes less, right? They take away the risk, but they also take away the reward in that sense. So those things go hand in hand. So on the, the medium long term, the more utility is built out, the more projects are built out, the, the higher the value of this market cap, right? Of this entire market. So I think the highest we saw was like 2.7 trillion, I think when Bitcoin was like on, on like 65K or something like this. So definitely a lot of long-term value if the utility is presented, however, the regulations will slow down a lot of different things. So a lot of things with DeFi, what's possible right now, like the insane uh, APRs. Um, let's, let's have a look at Time Wonderland. 
So obviously this is a huge benefit of DeFi, but also a huge nightmare, right? Because in any sense where one would say, oh, I can offer you 3,600 APR. If you, if you watch my videos, and I hope you guys all do, uh, looks rare, right? I, I love it. I love the ID. I see how it works, but I'm a business guy. So I know they are going to, to uh, reach an inflationary point where they have to pull triggers. It's super dodgy and somebody is going to be left holding the bag and that's not me. So that's why I never participate because I know you can make some short-term cash, but I'm not here to make short-term cash. I make, I'm here to make cash long-term, right? And I don't need to do like a 5K cash grab, although it's fun. Right, those swing trades on the Neko, Magic Craft, those are fun, right? Makes for some good content as well. But I don't need to do that in order to, to make some money, right? It's more longevity focused. And when a company basically tells you, hey, we offer 4,000% APR, you know something is wrong, right? How can they create that much value out of nothing? It means that their token value will go down sooner or later. And here there was some panic, there was some FUD, everything imploded and it turned to fucking shit. Right, and now it's like, well, I would say 95% down on its value. How do you achieve such productivity and sharp mind? What is your diet and daily regime? That is an interesting question. Um, I eat a very clean diet. <laughs> if anybody is interested in this, uh, I've been training for about 10 years in the gym, just your standard bodybuilding type shit, uh, and I do that four to five days a week. Uh, I don't eat any uh, processed foods, right? So my breakfast is like oatmeal and eggs, like any fitness type of behavior uh, right there. I'm 6'1", I weigh about 96 kilograms. So definitely a bigger guy. Uh, deadlift about 500 pounds. So you can see where that range is at. <laughs> in terms of the productivity, uh, it definitely uh, in, in the, how you say standard behavior. I'm not used to doing anything less than this. So you definitely have to build up that momentum to um, achieve that kind of readiness seven days a week. Basically it's all I do, right? It's like, it's not even work for me. It's just what I'm used to doing. It's not a hobby. Yeah, it's more like a hobby work kind of thing, basically on, on both sides. But I do understand if you have kids, if you have a spouse, then those take up a lot of times uh, as well. And you gotta find the balance in things. Um, the easiest thing to do is to create discipline is to do the same thing over and over again on the same schedule. So if your schedule is to read a book for half an hour a day, between seven and 8.30 PM, you read that book. And every single day you do the same. And after two weeks, it's like standard routine. That's the easiest thing. But that's like, I could make a whole different topic and video on that. Uh, <laughs> I just noticed unstoppable domains have buy one, get one free flash sale. Are they a good ID? I know people like to have like a .eth domain. I don't give a fuck about that. I just use my wallet address. I'm not gonna spend $5 on a fancy name unless uh, that has any additional benefit for me, but I don't think it does. So when I go to the digits club, right? And we, we have a look at the, uh, the contract. I just want to flex on you guys because I see Pierce is here, right? And Pierce is one of our biggest whales and he has a fancy Ethereum address. And definitely uh, looks cool. I mean, well, what's fucking, uh, is this OpenSea or is it my internet? No, I think it's OpenSea lagging again. If anybody else has questions, you can push the questions through. Is there somebody here on a call with a mask on inside? <laughs> he's, he's taking the mask off. No, no, it's okay, buddy. <laughs> if you want to have the mask on inside, it's all good. I just, I was just like, what, what, what do you have in front of your face? Um, yeah, so OpenSea is, uh, is tripping right now. It's not really working. I just wanted to show the, uh, the holder's position and then uh, flex that I'm now the number one holder, but can't because it's not working. Uh, anyway, back to CoinMarketCap, we go. Oh, there's maintenance people in your house. That makes sense. Keeping everybody safe and secure. All good, sir. All good. Um, alrighty. So let's head over back to gaming because we did the launch pads and there's not, not that much traction on the launch pads in general right now. Am I typing? No, not yet.
Nineco pumping. Well, such a small market cap, yeah. So basically, look at this, Nineco pumping, but like everything is pumping right now, right? 25%, 25%, 20%. So if anything would be pumping, quote unquote, I would say 150, 100%, 150% today, that would be like a pump. Everything else is just going with the flow, uh, basically bouncing off that, that lower low. When there's not much launch pads, where do you put your attention? Um, that's a good question. So with the launch pads, you, you basically have to, to have the continuous attention. So gaming is obviously one of the things that we focus on, right? On the other side, when you have the launch pads, and the categories of the launch pads, I, I basically look at the same things over and over again. So if you look at my search history, right, what I've been looking at, uh, the Phallus chain, Valera DAO launching yesterday, but I'll, I'll look at like the, the Unix launch pad, just check out the token, because I have this token and I haven't launched anything yet. So like 0.22, okay, that's fine. I'm interested in Firestarter, I haven't taken an entry yet. Okay, 32, so definitely this will, would have been an amazing buy opportunity. Somebody did buy a huge amount right here, spiked the price quite a bit. Um, but if there's not that many things happening, it doesn't mean that you cannot do anything. Right, there's definitely a lot of things um, active in the market, even when things are going down. So when uh, the, the market is a little bit in, in a downward trend, it again separates the people, you know? Uh, I, one thing I see is that when the market turns bearish, the YouTube views go down. The Discord activity in terms of messages goes down. Um, that's that's funny because the people who are actually dedicated in getting results and stuff, they are still watching, they're still communicating, right? So on that level, I think in, in the more bearish patterns of the market, most of the money is made because that is when you gain the knowledge, right? That's when things are being shared and people are actually paying attention or trying to understand what is happening, the underlying things, instead of... Uh, making money in a bull run, anybody can do this, right? When, when everything is pumping, just put in uh, 10K and a month later you have 20K. Uh, but it's also important as an individual who's interested in investing, I would say, that you learn the skill or at least try to learn the skill to make money in every possible market condition, right? What would happen if you would see a two to three year market condition with a bearish trend. Are you still going to be able to survive of that or not? I thought Valera DAO was quite interesting yesterday because I actually did, did expect to, uh, I didn't know what to expect, but I did expect it to perform a little bit better than it did. However, looking back at it this morning, it's still like 11 times IDO price, right? And compared to all the other launches we've seen so far, which is barely nothing because everybody keeps postponing their launches, uh, I think I think it did quite well overall. So that's definitely uh, an interesting move. Let's pull up Nineco then. So Nineco is pumping because staking, um, you can win NFTs, something like this. Um, in general, when, when this would go to like plus 21%, if the market at the same time is also going an average to 10 to, to 25% up, I would not say this is significant. The only thing you have here is significant risk because the market cap is so low, right? And this market cap is definitely not correct, I think. Um, but having a market cap so low does mean that if you sell off, let's say $10,000 worth of tokens, this price will just drop like three to four cents, which makes, uh, makes it quite a vulnerable position to be in. Up next, Magic Craft. This project is basically dying until the next hype, right? So it's not really dying, but they're, they're building the game. It takes time, all these, these good things. Uh, and up until that point, you won't see anything happening. And that's why if you look, for example, at Cytus, right? So Cytus is a project that was extremely hyped, right? And they have quite some good marketing. They know how to bring great visuals. 
And this is something I have been discussing with Digits Club, with the team, but also with other NFT projects and other gaming owners. Uh, what they're doing is the ideas of these projects, you don't want to live hype to hype. Um, the hype is basically what pushes the price up and it drops down again, right? It's not maintainable. So what happens is they hype with the new announcement, staking NFTs, the price jumps up and people sell again because investors, that's what they do. They take profit at the end of the day. So unless you uh, keep bringing hype, let's go to the, to the sketch pad, right? Easier for me to sketch it for you. Okay, so this is the chart, yeah? So any of these coins usually that go like IDO, hype, they go like this, hype, right? This, hype, this. And the benefit here is every time the vesting of the owners or the team is being released, which is usually right here, they push the hype announcement and they sell at the top, right? They sell at the top, they sell at the top, their allocation. And that's basically how the team knows they make money off the project if the long-term value is not there. Of course, as a project owner, and that's why one thing we will never do with Digits Club, I can already tell you, is pump the floor. Right? There's no reason for us to, to pump the floor price with insane announcements on OpenSea because the only person that benefits from that is the flippers right? who are looking to sell their NFTs. And why would you sell your NFTs if you want to be a part of this club to make some money? But I think the value that we provide in the community is enough to make enough money. right? So any project, any game on the longer term should look like this. right? It takes a long time, but as a linear upward trend, slowly, Right? And it might look like a little bit like this. This is actually the exact image Alex Becker drew two days ago in Neo Tokyo about the Neo Tokyo project value, because the value has been dropping significantly on that project. But I do agree on that vision where any of these, these uh, things, right? Because this is not in line with what the Bitcoin chart looks like, right? This is like artificial being pumped, this project, and especially the Senate token. Um, where it is like similar in, in the downward trend and everything. But I think Cytus uh, relies too much on like pump announcements instead of pro providing real value over time, um, which would basically mean that there would be a linear upward trend based on the market conditions, of course, and the quality of the actual accomplishments they make. Because what have they accomplished so far? A, a trailer, a small demo, and a lot of NFT cash grabs. Right? All they have done is basically build their, their, their cash base. Right? They haven't really released anything. And when I look at something like uh, Luvium, and Luvium doesn't come with a lot of announcements. Uh, this, the chart looks similar, right? But this chart looks almost identical to the linear downward trend of Bitcoin. Right? When Bitcoin started dropping, Illuvium started dropping. Right? There's still the daily trades, but there's no huge spikes, nothing like this. Right? Um, what they have been doing is they've been building out a big studio, big partnerships, uh, but nothing is being pumped or things are being announced, but they're, they're not there to pump the price, right? They're not, they understand that the direct correlation between the quality of their project is what automatically translates towards price. And those are very two different visions, which I see in the crypto gaming space right now. Um, and that's the reason why I don't like Cytus. Did I join the IDO for Cytus? Yes, because it make a lot of money, right? So it's not that I wouldn't join because we investors after all, but it's definitely interesting to see how these projects differentiate from one another, where you continuously see price pumps, for example, with Vulcan is because it's on Binance. There's a lot of big investors, but there's a lot of trades being made, right? And for the longevity of the Vulcan project itself, I don't think this price volatility is beneficial. Right, because no uh, serious investor, and what I'm talking about institutional, would want to be exposed to that much risk. When we look at something like Ultra, it's way more stable, right? It's definitely, you still see the discrepancies, but compared to let's say $600 value or $400 value, uh, the numeric distance is so much bigger than the percentage distance. So the percentage distance might be the same here, but the numeric distance is a lot smaller, so the quantity of the token is big, right? Again, I'm going a little bit off topic, but it's super interesting to see those patterns um, and, and calculate the risk, because at the end of the day, we all need to 
take into consideration the risk versus reward ratio and not just go like FOMO into all of these projects when some random guy on YouTube tells you it's interesting. Got to read the white paper in shape. Okay, any updates on any uh, website and staking? I haven't heard anything. And when I do hear something, I just complain, right? Because I don't like it when announcements are made in terms of deadlines and those deadlines are not being met. That's fine. One week, it's fine. Two weeks, it's fine. But four months, that means you're not on the roadmap at all and you're just doing something else. But I do get updates from them uh, regarding their progress. I think the website should have been live. There must be some issues regarding that, uh, but I haven't spoken about that with them. I did post two projects here, which I want to have a look at. So I post, I got this from, from Unix. And everybody was quite enthusiastic about it, right? Nobody voted no and eight people voted yes, uh, where I was a little bit more stubborn about this one. So that's why it's always nice to share. Of course, I didn't read the entire white paper. I just uh, looked at the website when I shared it because I will make a review on this one actually because you guys were so excited. Um, I just thought the website didn't look good, but it's extremely early, right? I think these guys are still trying to raise a seed investment. So it's like, see, it's like everything is still TBA, TBA, which is great. Uh, the trailer is extremely poor. I think it's like a five, the voice that they use is like a $5 voiceover from Fiverr. It's like really low quality, but the idea is kind of cool. And apparently the, the, the only thing that basically is like, it's just like a fucking shit trailer. The only thing that impressed me was like, when I opened it and it's at 65 pages, I scrolled through it and it's basically all about the game, right? There's definitely a heavy product focus, which I think is uh, really interesting that they have so much art and the idea of the game already sketched. It is in the style that I like. So like um, the, the futuristic sense and everything, but how many of these futuristic apocalyptic games are we going to see and are we going to get? This one really goes into very big detail about voting, about the DAO, how the economy works, all these different things, which I think is amazing. Um, that's why it's, it's so fucking long, right? And then you have the, the token distribution, what it looks like. So this is the first thing I scroll through. I read the summary of a project and I basically go straight to the tokenomics. Uh, but if you look at the public sales, basically 25% TGE, and then linear fasted across 11 months. For a public round, that's quite long, right? Private rounds, very low. I, I, if I would be interested, I would do seed, six month cliff, but the private has a five month cliff. So the seed is very uh, interesting in that case, right? So that's basically how I start to read these things, just to see if it's interesting, because I don't want to read the entire white paper, know whatever this game is about, spend two hours reading 65 pages, because I read quite slow when I'm trying to really analyze it, and then realize that the tokenomics are fucked up and I'm not interested in joining anyway. So I scroll to the tokenomics, I have a look at the images, does it look interesting? Did they put in some real effort? If yes, then I'm willing to put in some real effort and, and have a look myself. Um, the team is there, blah, 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 everything. All right. What is your expectation on Battleverse? Coin is close to IDO price, NFT is not really moving, the game is almost out. Um, to be fair, to be really fair, I haven't looked at it at all. Uh, I have not uh, kept track. I didn't participate in the IDO. I did know it launched on CDFI. Um, but, what, what's the BVC? Yeah, so maybe IDO price was 10 cents, something like this. Five cents. Oh, I mean, I mean, if it's holding in the current market uh, times two, that's still, uh, not bad that we don't have the IDO information. So for five cents, I think it's, it's holding quite decent. The thing is, I love the ID of this game, right? How they have designed it. Um, I think that the main thing is that they can build a quality game, right? So I don't think that the problem is the game. I don't think the problem is the NFTs. I think the, the main thing that might hold this project back is the marketing. Right, so the marketing side of things is not that strong. Uh, recently, when I'm talking more and more with Unix about potential projects, 
I'm not an advisor for Unix, but I, I, I try to, to at least talk with them about the projects they're looking at and everything. Try to learn something myself to share with you guys as well. Um, the marketing is really important. So projects are getting dropped from Launchpad just because the marketing is not as strong as it needs to be. Um, so you might build like an amazing game, but at the end of the day, that's with any business, right? You might build an uh, insane business, but uh, if the marketing is shit, then yeah, it's uh, not going to, to pull out. <laughs> Let them hire you for marketing. I know, I do know a lot about marketing, but it's not really regarding uh, these types of things. When you see like um, the Shark Tank keto pills, right? The fake articles and stuff, that is my, my style of performance marketing. So it's definitely not mainstream, <laughs> but we do make a lot of money with that type of shit. Uh, but we're consultants, right? So we don't run the actual ads uh, ourselves. But that that the whole that's like a whole shady world where like sixty percent of the actual advertising spend in the world is like on performance style campaigns like that and branding, branding as well. Um, remember, you doing a MCRT video a while back? Any updates? I I, I just shared uh, Magic Craft, right? That so we just looked at the chart uh, like ten minutes ago. Uh, the thing for Magic Craft is that if there's no major updates or game developments, the coin is not going to do anything. And I think that's actually smart. I think actually this is the thing they should do, specifically with the bearish uh, market conditions right now. Um, what, what, what would we expect them to do, right? They can again make a hype announcement, they can do a new exchange. And for the project itself, what you have to understand, the price goes up and at the same time it goes down because people take profit because the market is looking so bad, right? So I would just, uh, if you have Magic Craft right now, hold it. Um, would it make for an interesting entry? It depends on how long the roadmap is because they haven't executed yet on any big major milestone. So then if, if, a, if a project like, for example, Cry War, let's just bring that back as we've discussed it before, they have made some major things, right? They have active gameplay and active uh, dev playing the game on mobile, displaying it, they're not hiding anything. Uh, those I think are major accomplishments for investors that we can take notice of. Uh, but I, I don't even think the NFTs are done for Magic Craft, right? And that's the next cash model for them to raise funds to develop the game. I think one uh, game that is making quite some steps is Mouse Hunt. So I've be, I have been following them, right? So you can definitely see that it came from quite a strong base and has declined, but not as significantly as other tokens might have. So this one seems to be developing quite quickly. It's quite a, a simple game as well, right? It's not a complex game to build, I think. I don't know how to build games, but it's like uh, basically uh, like the old school Nintendo games. There's like a path, you need to follow the path, uh, beat the enemies, that type of stuff. But I get the ID. And it looks uh, looks quite cool, like quite interesting. I can understand why people would play this. Would I ever play this myself? Fuck no. See, it's like, I think it's quite low quality for a game. Um, we, we, who announced that yesterday? I think it was, it was like, a, oh, Axie Infinity yesterday made an announcement. The main developer of Axie Infinity made an announcement that they're going to change their titles on their communication from uh, play to earn to play and earn, right? So uh, specifically what I've been saying a long time on YouTube, but others have been as well, the focus should be more on play and not so much on earn. And they're actually going to address it because they realize that it, the, uh, again, the, the bitches, <laughs> the uh, economy is not sustainable when it's focused about earning and not about playing the actual game, right? So play and earn from play to earn. Uh, the longevity, the value, their uh, equity of the project would therefore linearly go up and not experience that much uh, volatility during different market conditions. Do you hold any of the major crypto gaming coins, Gala, Ultra, Engine, right now? No, not at the moment, that is. That is an interesting question. So I did, uh, let me see, let me pull up, because I, I did make a video when I bought them, but I also made a video when I sold them. Um, I can't even remember to be fair, it was this year, but I did sell them after quite a good pump. 
uh, maybe it was earlier this month when like the, the pump occurred, or I think I missed Gala. Gala was the only one that I missed. I bought like five different ones. And then one day there was a huge pump and I just sold them all with like, I think that, that trade was like 15, 20,000 profit. I have a video on YouTube about it. But this one, I think I missed Gala. That was the only one that I missed. And that was the time that it did 100% uh, return. So it must be this pump. So it was like 100% in two days. I still feel the pain about missing that one. <laughs> But you can't you can't have everything, right? If you uh, if you focus on the lows, and I think people should focus a lot more on the lows than on the highs, right? Because if the, if the market is high, yesterday um, there was a lot of good communication in the Discord about what should we do, should we buy, should we sell, what should we do, uh, and at that moment when you feel like the biggest fear, I think that that's when you should pull the trigger against the emotion. Of, of not buying, of passing on the opportunity. Uh, but it's easier said than done. My thoughts on FN, I am holding. I am quite bullish on FN in the long term, solely because of the team. The idea is cool, the game is interesting, right? Uh, I'm not really into the whole Pokemon kind of thing, but I do understand why uh, they want to model that, that previous success. But again, uh, slow linear downward trend to the market conditions. But this is a project with, which has a team that is quite strong. And most of the teams they're hiding, right? They're hiding behind their game. The game should do all the marketing, but especially like the bigger investors, the VCs, they look at the team. The team comes first because they need to pull up the project, right? FN came in really strong from the start with their team, uh, making videos with their team, explaining who they are, and they continue to do so, right? So if you go to their YouTube channel, every single director has a video explaining their background, what they do. I, I really do like this video. Um, I write, like this video, video for the specific reason that they understand how to communicate the mass adoption. This is a video that any normal citizen can understand who is not into crypto, who's not into the metaverse, who's not into gaming. Um, they can see this and understand, okay, so basically you enter a world with the little Pokemon creatures and you can play, but it's off your phone and it goes back and forth and you can do it anywhere you like. Um, I think there was quite a good marketing team behind it <laughs> to, to pull this off, right? To translate it in, in such an extent. Uh, but a lot of games that have this vision, oh, we're going to build a metaverse, we're going to do this. So if basically the rule of thumb is, if a game does an IDO uh, or before that, during that period, does a character NFT sale, they do an NFT land sale, all these different things. The games are fucking cash grabs. They're not going to achieve anything, right? It's very much likely that you can still make money off them, right, in the, in the short, medium term. But something like FN that is taking one full year to sell their NFTs and their land, Right? Because that's their only plan for 2022, develop the game, do the marketing, and, and those two major milestones. Some companies do that in one week, a character sale and a land sale. Why? Because when they have the hype and the marketing, they want to get the money and then they'll figure out, well, they'll, they'll raise 50 million, like fucking soul chicks, right? They will raise uh, 35 million, I think, or 50 million on soul chicks, and then develop like a game for like 2 million, let the hype die out and then fuck off the game, right? Or just put like a two man team on it to run it uh, and they have secured the money, how they're going to withdraw that money or whatever, I don't know. But that is definitely a strategy that we see often with these lower quality games, or at least the over promising of executing on games, right? And that's one of the bigger risks for investors right now, I believe in the crypto gaming space. So I'm not talking about flipping. I'm actually talking about investing into seed rounds or private rounds and doing one year worth of investing and or more, right? The biggest risk you're exposed to is fucking shit projects. Uh, and 100% TG is always a shit project um, unless you're not in the public round. So if the public round is like, let's say less than one and a half percent, I don't think the advisors did a proper job on the tokenomics if they would agree on 100% TGE but they probably do that for a reason to start trade volume requirements or anything like this. Um, but if the team, for example, a game with uh, two people added Moonfrost, I think uh, the other week game, 
moonfrost frost.com oh that's not it ah, moonfrost.io right so they have a two people team right this guy and this girl they both came from the same company before this so they know each other um, and they both worked at whatever the base copy of this game is i don't know what the fuck it's called but it's literally almost a one-on-one -on -one copy it's in steam the game uh, and they're going to make this a crypto game right okay it's fair enough right that's the business model um, but i was quite excited about this until i realized it's basically a one-on-one -on -one copy almost of a existing game which was extremely successful uh dark moon valley or no that's like a world of warcraft thing dark brew valley something like this uh valley something uh, and they basically build it out of a passion project oh here stardew valley that's what it says uh, but basically it looks like a cash grab right you just copy paste the code you make some changes to it there's only a two-person team what can a two-person team really achieve if you understand digits club track digits and the whole brand behind it is 30 people and it just got fucking started 30 people involved and they want to build a game with two people it's ridiculous right of course this is in the extreme early stages but two people makes no sense to me right there has to be more developers more team involved unless it's a catch grab and they just wanted to get the money and then uh, see whatever they end up with and because there's no regulations they really can if they want to facts big facts guys what's the time 10 minutes left put your questions in the chat box and i'll make sure to address them let me stop the screen share for a bit so we can all see each other i see a lot of people driving and listening to the call at the same time do drive responsibly we don't want you to die Jose, Jose, how would I say it? Mr. Young, <laughs> it's like, yeah, all good, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> no, I saw like two other people before, they were also driving. Okay, no more, uh, no more questions. Well, damn, we're, we're, got, we're blasting through it quite smoothly today. Quite smoothly indeed. I do have some other interesting news, but I can't share it yet can't share it just yet. Okay, somebody just shared something. Let's have a look at that, if there's no questions. Will we see a 30K Bitcoin soon? I hope so. No, no, I don't hope so, because I got nothing in stables. I do have some stables, but uh, I, I prefer the bullishness. Uh, yeah, the perks are coming next week on Tuesday, I think. So somebody just shared this. Cripecade? I don't know what the fuck that is. Can somebody send me the link in Discord because I don't have my Telegram open. Somebody can grab me this Cripecade link and then we can check it out what it's actually about. Because crypto winter, salty. I have no idea, it looks boring as fuck. <laughs> and if he's salty, then I must be salty on it as well. But we, we would need a link. I'll just type. Oh, shit. Oh, perfect. Somebody posted it here in the chat. Read more details here. Let's go. Thank you very much, sir. I didn't catch your name, but I appreciate you sending it in. Okay, so initial market cap will be on the higher side. 200K, like 150, 200K seems to be the sweet spot for the pump, but only 5% TGE, 4% released after 30 days, three month cliff. Holy fuck, that's some crazy fast thing. For, for a public pool, right? It's the public round. Okay, let's have a look. Cripecade is what it's called. Coming soon, all right? Powered by Myra, advanced AI, start. What the fuck is this? Where the fuck are we? Some kind of arcade lottery type shit? A gambling type thing? 
even the colors and the lights just already fuck me off. I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? This looks like some like uh, 1980s scam website. Okay, is there a white paper perhaps? Uh, we're, we're on the user side of things, how to make a withdrawal, how to do this, how to do that. Telegram, Twitter, home. Okay. But no white paper, unfortunately. Maybe on the maybe on the medium post here. Oh, here we go. See? Okay, let's just go to the best thing. 15 pages, can you imagine? The other one, so this is a white paper, right? The other one I sent you, the white paper was 67 pages and then some some like empty pages, like 71. This one is a white paper of 15 pages. That already gives me indication. And this is one of the pages. So out of the 15 pages, one of the pages is just a full image, right? And these are like stock images as well. So this doesn't look good at all. This looks interesting. because That's actually gameplay footage. Metaverse native casino. Okay. Able to sit their avatars to play, enjoy. Okay, so it's basically a social casino kind of thing where you can actually walk around with the character. I don't know why gamblers would enjoy that because if you have like real addicts gambling, they don't give a fuck what the screen looks like. If it's just entering some numbers, they, they live on the ecstasy of actual like gambling and not playing around with like a virtual fucking creature. 5% strategic, 2% public, 8% private, 15 plus 5% seed, 20. Okay, 5%. What the fuck? Okay, 5%. Seed allocation, 8%, 5 okay. Oh, here it is. 4%, 10 days after TGE, 3% after a three-month cliff. Yeah, so. Okay, so they would get the private round, not public. So it says public, but I think they mean private. Okay, so it's public pool allocation, but it's private because the vesting that they posted is private vesting. Come on, any pet. The copy pasting is not going too well. Okay, so it's the private round, 2.2 .2 cents from the seed. So it's definitely interesting that the seed gets 4% 10 days off the TG. So the seed, you don't have to worry about. 5% and then they get 6% and they're quite a bit higher. So that's interesting. Then you have four month fasting, three month cliff, two month cliff, 12 month fasting. I think that's also decent. And the seed is basically getting fucked. They did get it a lot cheaper, right? But they have the, the delay here, then 3%, and then a three month cliff and 14, so which is basically the same. So they have just the benefit on the price here. And then public, 2% only, definitely a huge difference. 12%. So basically, the, the ones that get real fucked is public. Right? If you would do this in a public round, it basically makes no sense looking at the price differences. So if you do private, you only get 5% TGE, but on the launch, you already have 100% gain. Right? Which is, again, I don't know why, why companies uh, make the tokenomics like this. This is probably some guy who just typed in tokenomics and be like, it's, it's probably the same guy who make like the fire starter allocation model for the launch pad. It's like so overcomplicated. He was like, hey man, let me just grab a beer and just like, Tom, did you make this? <laughs> He's like, let me do tokens. Let me, no, wait, we also do NFTs. And let me say some is lottery and some is guaranteed. But let me make the guaranteed model as difficult as possible. It's just like so many different uh, variations. And I like the fire starter model. I just think the guy who make this allocation is a cunt, right? It's like <laughs> so, so complex, it makes no sense. Um, the same way that this, these tokenomics, yes, your race is only 2% on the public round, yet it's not really attractive in any way or form because you still have only 12% at TGE, 3% after 30 days, and then four months linear. So that would be 15, 85% divided by four. So you get like, whatever, 20, 22% per month thereafter. 
um, I would make the TGE a little bit bigger to make it more attractive, but bring this price also down a little bit. The price discrepancy is quite big. Then I mean, come on, man, like on these art models, well, it's like fucking $5 to hire a designer to make a little bit of a nice model. This is your white paper. This is presumably what sells your project to, to the investors, right? And you come up with this fucking garbage. Uh, I'm easy to complain, right? I always complain about white papers. That's, that's my kind of my job on this YouTube thing, right? On these, 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 these videos. I just review and I try to be as critical as possible on all the things that could improve. And I just think, um, so it's, it's definitely heavy on the token, right? Token, how it works, how it makes money, the token distribution. So we have about the economy, uh, multi-currency. So basically one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, here's the mission. So six out of the 15 pages, and it's not 15, it's actually 12 pages because you have a front page and you have like a middle page, a table of contents. So half of the pages talk about the investors and the other half talks about the game. Now, when we compare that to the angelic game that we looked at before, there was probably about 60 pages about the game and three pages for investors. And that is basically the huge difference in terms of the quality, which you can just analyze with fucking common sense of the white paper. Mind blown, kind of. I got cut off. You were saying something about big news. No, I'm no longer going to present you big news. We're going to keep the hype to a minimum. Only when I have real announcements, I will post real announcements and then I will calm you all down. Uh, but on Tuesday, we'll reveal the perks. Uh, the first perk at least uh, and I already teased that I think yesterday or two days ago when we did that AMA so that was definitely uh, going to be pushed forward I think Herman signed another partner today so that will be introduced next week uh, which is interesting right I'm going to calm down on the on the major announcement but yes it's huge of course we signed another launchpad partner but <laughs> Uh, I'm always a little bit too excited and everything, but things are moving in the right progression. Um, about the TGE, 20%, uh, it, it, like the TGE amounts are relative to the price and the vesting of the other rounds. So if something is 20% TGE or 10% TGE, you can't really say if that's good or that's bad. It's always relative to what the others are getting, right? Can they dump? Do they have a major benefit? Do we have the benefit? And all you really have to decide when you look at the vesting is that you're not the one in the most uncomfortable position unless the project is going to moon and you're willing to take that disadvantage to make an entry. That basically uh, is what I'm saying. For right now, we're out of time. If you have any additional questions, jump inside the Discord, post your questions there in the general chat. Please do not tag me because I get a lot of tags because we have a wonderful amount of insanely smart people all around in this community who can help you with your questions. I'll be back next week, 4 p.m. UTC. I hope to see you there. Thank you all so much for being here. Bye-bye. Uh,